Now's the part of the show where we send a correspondent out into the music world. This week, we sent our intrepid streetwalker, Mark Hoffman. This guy! This guy! Me. This guy went record shopping with the one and only Pete Wentz. You guys are already friends, right? Pete and I are the bestest of friends ever. Wow. We are. We are very good friends. We're both fathers, we're both bass players, we both have terrible haircuts, we bond. Well, let's see what happened when you guys were flipping through old albums. So we've come here today to the record surplus in the heart of downtown Los Angeles to talk to Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy and now The Black Cards about his music collection, his musical influences, and most importantly, what the hell is with that haircut? Let's go inside. Dude. What do you got? Solid. We are inside now where you should be a lot more often, an actual record store, and I'm joined by my good friend and best man at my wedding, Pete Wentz. Hi, Pete. Hi. What were your influences growing up, musically? Honestly, the first thing that got me into music in general was uh, Katarina Witt ice skating in the Olympics to Michael Jackson. All right. And so Thriller uh -huh. was like a huge influence for me. My band covered Beat It. Mm -hmm. No one should be covering songs off of Thriller because you can't do it better than the original. Right. But we just did it on a lark, kind of, and... And you didn't. You didn't do better than the original. I've seen it. I thought this was going to be a puff piece. It is a puff piece. <laughs> you get to talk I'll about your favorite that. bands. <laughs> <laughs> but so that, that got me interested in music, it, like, when I was, like, eight or nine, I think, you know? And right. then, Welcome to the Jungle video, when Axl Rose steps off the bus, I'm like, Whoa, that chick's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but but that was that was what like made me want to be in a band. I remember that I would have to listen to It's So Easy and uh, I would have to turn it down when he says it's so damn easy right. or whatever, or so goddamn easy. I have to turn that down when I was in the car with my mom. This was like the first stage of rebellion where it was like I felt like I had ownership over my own musical taste. What's the actual first uh, CD or album that you bought? Honestly, I was into like Vanilla Ice and MC Hammer and stuff like that. I remember buying Vanilla Ice's song for Ninja Turtles 2, whatever that <laughs> was, you know, or whatever, and thinking that was cool at the time. So what about punk music? I know that you grew up listening to a lot of punk bands. Yeah, definitely. Um, I got into Alkaline Trio and Screeching Weasel. I had this on cassette tape, actually, and listened to it on my way to prom. Mm -hmm. um, I think my mom made me go to prom with somebody one year. <laughs> but then, honestly, like, uh, Dude Ranch was one of the few records that, like, like you know, big records that was a punk band that we listened to. And we I got really... a pass? Yeah. I don't right, know. It was just cool. like, that's it good. was like just a really good record and ended up being hugely influential in on Fall Out Boy. Oh, cool. So I'm gonna show you some CDs now. We can do like a lighting round. Just give us your basic impressions of the bands I'm about to put up. First of all, Four Years Strong. Oh, uh, they're on my label. That cover is not ironic at all. Wait, but this dude's actually half horse? Uh, he wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, how about this band, The Cure, Pornography? Oh, this is an awesome record. This record? If you're ever depressed or feeling a little down, put this on. It will drive you over the edge and you'll never come back. <laughs> Done. Uh, finally, this lady right here. Let's talk about this record. I think there's a couple lyrics that are about me. There are probably some lyrics that are not about me. Now, is this before you guys were married? Uh, this is before we were married. We were dating mm -hmm. at the time. She was on the cover of Blender magazine. She came to my parents' house for Christmas. She was like, why is this Blender magazine right next to your bed in your parents' house? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> about that. About that. <laughs> oh, Barry White. You should get this for you and your old lady tonight. Show you right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> what are the new artists that uh, you're excited about? It's not new. Back Again is Eminem. His new record oh, is just so absolutely insane. Yeah. And I think that people should check that out because it's just miles beyond what a lot of people are doing right now. Awesome. I actually had this, by the way. I actually own <laughs> that. I probably could go to my house right now and find this exact one. That's awesome. And you, you know who lives like a crazy rock star? Jan Hammer. <laughs> Look at that dude. This is awesome. <laughs> Here we are again with you guessed it, Mark Hoppus. Hey, nice awesome. piece, nice piece, Mark. So how long have you known Pete? Uh, Pete and I have known each other for a few years. We actually met at a record store in Los Angeles. And then actually I then met him again right outside here at Fuse. I was coming out of an interview and they were going in for an interview and we talked on the street and it was really awkward. And then Pete and I kept in touch ever since. Nice. Was he really the best man of your wedding? No, I don't know why I said that. He wasn't even invited to my wedding. I didn't even know him. He, he, <laughs> he probably was so even... confused when he said that. He was like, what? Yeah, he probably wasn't even born yet. He might not have even been in a band. But wow. let me tell you this. If I were to get married again today, he could totally park the cars. That's sweet. Yeah, so 